Hello there, this is JK from the Ministry of Otaku, 15 year veteran of the anime convention scene in the DC metropolitan area and resident cosplay autographer. Hope you're doing well in this dystopian and catastrophic time in our country. And I hope you're not uh, actually obsessed with this derangement society has succumbing to in the last few days. Yesterday, I was able to watch the first episode of Redo of a Healer, both the broadcast and uncensored version. This anime has been hyped as one anime that would make any trailer burn. Already, there was some, there was one humorist on Anime News Network who says that I would judge anyone who streams this anime, which I've already put on this channel some time ago. But I want to get to this anime's first episode. And I'm going to use the screenshot for the broadcast version because the uncensored version has some very spicy things too hot for YouTube. Here we see the Atanis Princess Flare in a vulnerable position by the Atanis, by the attack by, by the protagonist, Kagaru, who is who has this revenge plot against the kingdom Atanis for exploring and mistreating him for his healing powers. You can see his grinning face while his, her room is burning. After the opening, we got all the way to the beginning where the protagonist is seeing the same dream of him finding the Dean Lord. He wakes up and he hears a voice in his head telling him to get stronger. His mom knows that he gets these dreams of being a hero to fight the Dean Lord, which, he, which she loves for his son to be. Since children are at play pretending to be, the source man of a, be a source man or a magician. The next scene shows the protagonist is a, simply, is a simple country bunkin and farmer picking fruit from a tree. As he picks a fruit from a branch, he gets a vision of a purple gem and told to obtain the sight of the spirits. He moves there as if he is pulled from the tree. He walks all day and night to a lake in the middle of the forest, spoke some words that we don't hear to summon a fairy which comes out of a pillar of light. He asks for the sight of the spirits that can see all and probably gets the sight of the, spirits, of the spirits by the fairy kissing his left eye. No, I'm serious. This actually happens in the anime. With his power, he is able to witness a grand battle with the demon lord versus the princess and her party, which is a magician, which is the princess herself, a swordsman, and a tank revealing a magically Im imbued gatling gun. Yes, you heard me. A Gatling gun. I thought this was a fantasy world of swords and arrows, swords and magic. Why are we seeing a Gatling gun in my fantasy anime? Oh wait, this is an anime. Now the animation is not that great, it's basic for an adaptation, but it gets the job done in showing the battle. Now with the team defeated, we finally see the healer with them out of elixir, which is the healing potion of the world. Princess Flair demands the hero of healing to heal them. Then the hero tells the audience his power is his healing ability, and his ability is much more than healing as he gets to see and experience the same memories and thoughts as the, as the person he sees. He could not endure it, so the protagonist runs away every chance he gets, but he gets caught and gets drugged, tortured, and beaten like an animal. The anime illustrates this lightly. We don't see the graphic detail, details of how he's treated. All we see is him being choked, bitten, and drugged in a dungeon. Fed up with him being treated like trash. And at the same time, getting a resistance to the drugs and seeing an opportunity, he basically tells her to go screw herself while he fights the Demon Lord himself and she gets whacked by Demon Lord magic. He explains and shows the side effects of his power his ability to relieve the spirits of the people he healed, which includes fighting skills of all the swordsmen he forced to heal for his for the party. He imitated and adapted them into their own into his own uh style with Dean Lord's forces of darkness uh fighting him and he's a force of light and he's able to instantly kill any force of darkness as naturally heroes represent light and demons our forces are dark. So he's more of a offensive and imitation healer. Basically, Kakaru is the hero of imitation healing. With those skills, he was able to get and grab the stone she was holding after defeating the Demon Lord. As soon as, she, as he was able to defeat her true form, her true monstrous form, 
the demon lord actually becomes sad that she failed. She's not vengeful or angry, but sad that she failed and about to die. Uh, Kagao says, It's not the real end. We'll be seeing each other real soon. We'll be seeing each other again real soon. More rare visions come as the attendance is actually the king's daughter. Kagao knows that the daughter is going to use the now called Flossil Stone, not, not related to reading a book, Flossil Stone, but similar to the stone in Full Metal Alchemist series to allow her to rule the world as he used it to go back in time by reversing time of the earth to e on everyone and everything. The dog tries to char charge her a magical attack on him, but too late, he got what he wanted by reversing time. And this is how he got the Halcon Eye, which he is able to foresee everything that is going on and allows him to know what is going to happen. And knowing he's going to be drugged later by the princess after he does his first heal, he draws himself with mushrooms, narcotic mushrooms, to gain the resistance early. Flair finally arrives up and finish the day after he gains the mark of the hero, and she reveals herself as the eldest princess of the Goral, of the kingdom of Goral. Her full name is Flair Ergon de Flor Goral, a hero of magic, and she arrives to seek a hero of the mark of the hero. They both get along casually while riding to the capital, as it's revealed to us that the capital was created by burning the village of the indigenous demi-humans to the ground, occupy their lands, and turn their survivors into servants and slaves. After best time, the title of the hero by healing the, uh, the, after best time, the title of hero of healing by the king, he gets classes in cultural etiquette and swordsmanship, while getting a queen-sized bed in a large room, a big room, since it's a castle, with maids offering him literal fan service. Now, in the uncensored version, there is a standard sex scene with the maid having big tatas. And he was able to use that to his advantage by copying their skills and knowledge. <coughs> in the uncensored version, he also gets to experience all sorts of spicy activities and positions, including a two-way, a three-way, and a four-way scene. All of them are in a uh, long distance. But for those of you who are really interested in those scenes, scenes you can just watch the uncensored version for the episode. You really don't need to watch the uncensored version of the of the first episode, because it's just an introduction slash prologue episode. Now, we get to a scene where the protagonist and the great swordsman, the hero does his work, and we see what the protagonist describes as the experience of the source person who is in pain and who is in a fight and experience the same uh, scenes, the same experiences as the source uh, person has. Now, the swordsman is actually a woman. She calls herself a source, a source man. Now, all those experiences flowing in his mind, we see them and we finally understand the protagonist's power. While the, while, the protagonist, while the protagonist, the healer, faints from experiencing the pain, he gets thanked for it by the great swordsman, Kurea. Kurea Kurea uh, Kura is the swordsman or swordswoman, and she tells, and she tells uh, Kurea that that uh, she owes him one. Did I mention Kurea? I meant to say uh, the protagonist. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm saying, but anyway, I'm just going wing at this point. Now, and uh, after the protagonist faints, we see Flair's true motivation for needing him, and sees the protagonist as useless if he's going to faint every time he heals. The sage, the sage of the castle reveals and tries to explain to her, in his viewpoint, his potential true power, which the princess reveals as something that she can exploit. And she sees him fainting as something as worthless. Basically, she told the sage to draw the protagonist and exploit him so she can use him. This is when we see the audience sees that 
he can finally start his revenge plot with him grinning at the screen. This episode is an introduction episode, but it's more of a prologue than an introduction the way the episode is structured. We see the hero, the, the protagonist hero, while in the village. He heads to the lake with a the ferry. Then, and we go to the story in the midst of things, with the grand final battle between the party and the demon lord. And then we head back to the lake, with him knowing everything that is going to happen with the Holocaust site. And the story is just like the beginning, but with him fully aware of what's going on. <coughs> now the visuals, they're not much to cry home about, or to celebrate. They just do the job telling the story, with uh, some basic CGI effects. But the quality shots, where it was shown in the very beginning, and some scenes at the beginning during the fairy scene, the voice acting is good, but I'm more focused on how enjoyable the anime is, and I can say that it is enjoyable. But there, there is one problem with the anime, that it didn't go far enough illustrating how the protagonist got tortured and mistreated. All we see is him being drugged, choked, and punched in a span of 10 seconds. That's it. Even in the uncensored version, it's the same thing. But the underdog taking revenge theme reminds remind us of another anime that is well celebrated in the anime community, Rise of the Shield Hero, which Yoris hate, despite being written by a woman, and this anime is based on a light novel written by a woman. Ironic, since anime fans seem, the website anime fans seems to hate this anime. But I will be seeing the second episode next week, and the rest of the anime if the United States does not collapse into total bedlam. So there you have it. What are your thoughts on this anime? Please give a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. It really helps a lot, and I'll see you next time. Try to stay safe and sane out there, will you?